Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, your podcast dedicated to all things Animal Crossing. This episode is brought to you by Arden and Herman, one of our newest Patreon patrons. I should actually say two of our newest Patreon patrons. They're a duo. Anyways, today, Sergio and I will be talking about the rumors of a Nintendo Direct this week, the start of Animal Crossing back on N- on the N64 in Japan, since it is our N64th episode, and how we want to see towns change in Animal Crossing Switch. And of course, we always have a Haken's Villager Corner asking if you want cooking added to the game. So anyways, how are you doing, Sergio? Hello, Chewy. I'm doing quite well. What about you? I'm doing well. It's uh, it's snowing again, like crazy. So Ooh. we got a crazy snowstorm in the middle of the week. We had about like over a foot of snow. Everything was shut down, and things like Ooh. I was I was starting to wonder when things would shut down, like how bad it would have to snow for that to happen here. Right, and right. it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So how how have things been with you? It's been going well. It's been a, a nice weekend, a good mix of playing games and being productive. I'm I'm, co- um, I'm working on updating my computer. I didn't get all the parts that I needed to like really get in there, you know, and installing mm-hmm. hard drives and stuff. But hopefully next weekend, everything should be here. <laughs> That's cool. And I wanted to ask you, did you happen to play any of the like official Nintendo tournaments? There was one for Smash and one for Splatoon. No, I know they both happened. I know some people that play, but not not myself, no. Yeah, I did it. We did it kind of last minute. I played Ooh. in one round. Our first round was like the team didn't show up, so we just won right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then the second round was pretty close. I didn't play in that one. The third one I played in, um, and we won 3-0. to zero. And then after that, I got swapped out again, but we were playing a pretty good team and lost at that point. Um, yeah, oh, and that was Splatoon, by the way. Splatoon right. 2. I don't play Smash competitively. <laughs> I would get you know, tossed it's, around. <laughs> it's funny that they kind of tend to do these tournaments, like the official Nintendo tournaments, when there's a Splatfest going on. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I Okay, well, let's get right into this. We're going to talk about all of these rumors for the Direct. And so if you haven't heard... Um, and maybe by the time this episode is out, Ooh. like the direct is already announced or something and we're just <laughs> waiting for it to happen. Oh, I, ca- I can't believe that. Um, anyway, so like right now it's Sunday for us. We haven't heard anything. Um, we could wake up tomorrow and there's a direct, you know, um, or we could not and there just isn't. Right. right. But I guess uh, thinking about the tournaments that just happened, Clearly, Nintendo is going to have some big presence at PAX East. That's what that's what I'm determining from this. Like, mm. they're having these big tournaments, and the people who are winning them are going to go and represent their region in PAX East. And so, Nintendo is holding um, a Splatoon tournament and a Smash tournament, and so it tells me that Nintendo is going to be there, and they're going to be there in a way that's kind of big, you yes. know. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a presence. So I feel like this just kind of points to the fact that they need to have some cool new things that are exciting for people to go and see at their booth and that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so what if, like, people going to PAX East, they're going to be, like, the first to go hands-on with Animal oh. Crossing or something. That would be... <laughs> I'd be so jealous. I'd be so <laughs> jealous. <laughs> um. But at the same time, you know, you get all those um, people who say that Animal Crossing isn't really a game that demos very well. So there's a chance that it doesn't really show up there, you know? Right, right. But they probably have other things that they want to tell us about that are going to be playable at PAX East. Yes. Um, So, yeah, that's all I'm saying. I'm just saying that with these big tournaments, with um, Nintendo putting like a bit of an emphasis on PAX East... It sounds to me like they've got to have some news brewing, you know? Yes, and it's always nice to to show something considerable in in this kind of events. You know, it's not an E3, and Nintendo likes to do their own things at their own time, but it's always nice to have something to catch some eyes uh, during, when the press is looking. 
Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of people showing up to this event to see an event, like something yeah. big and exciting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. Um, so anyways, let's get into these rumors. So the main rumor or the one that people are counting on the most is that the Nintendo Direct is coming on February 13th, 2019. Um, like I said, we're recording on Sunday, so we don't know. But it's Tuesday when you're listening to this, so you might know at this point, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, I, I just keep thinking about that. It's blowing my mind right now. Um, but anyway, so February 13th, 2019. So tomorrow for all of you listeners, this rumor came from a post on Reset Era by King Zell. And fun fact, Zell is actually a smug deer villager in Animal Crossing. Yes. So I 100% approve of their name. <laughs> um, and I feel like, uh, I don't know, they must be... They're in the Animal Crossing <laughs> camp. Like, they clearly want some Animal Crossing news as much as we do. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so regardless, apparently this King Zell person has been right about many things. Um, one The first, uh, I, I have a little list of what they've been right about. There's the World Ends With You um, announcement. There was the Pokemon Let's Go reveal they're, they were even right about Animal Crossing Switch getting announced. And they were right. Apparently, the most recent one is the indie highlights that we just got for oh. for Europe, mm -hmm. which was last month. And so that, I don't know, it sounds convincing. You know, like that's a good track record. Yes. And apparently, this person just hasn't been wrong. Um, so anyways, what they said in their post was 13 is your lucky number. And so people are assuming that February 13th is the day. It could also just be like add 13 days from whenever they posted that. And that's when we're getting it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but regardless, it has something to do with 13. And it seems like a lot of people are leaning toward that February 13th date. So I want to ask you, Sergio, do you think this rumor could be true? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> you know, the, based on the based on the track record and the, the rumors out there, it sounds very, very possible. There's always, or well, there's very often some smoke before there's a, an official Nintendo Direct, and as far as I can tell, this is a lot of good smoke. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I'm really hopeful there, there's something in, yeah. I, I know, us as Nintendo fans, you know. Myself being one, I, th I know it can be pretty demanding, but I think it's been a really long time since Nintendo has said anything official, and I think it's it could do them more harm if they if they stay quiet for too long. So I think it's it's about time. It's actually a little bit late this direct. <laughs> yeah, I think it's almost been five months since like a general direct at this point. Right, and that is nearly half a year with nothing absolutely no news and that's insane that is truly yeah. insane um and i mean like nintendo doesn't have to do these things but now that they do they kind of have to <laughs> so <laughs> so i know i'm being i don't i don't know what i am i just i we need some news and it's it, i think the reason it hurts more right now is because we got teased, essentially. Yes. At first, they were just like, oh, look, Isabel in this wonderful-looking town hall doing all this work and being amazing. And then they're like, oh, yeah, she's in Smash. And then we're all heartbroken. And then they bring us back, and they're, Tom Nook is here to save the day. And he's just like, it's time for Animal Crossing, you guys. We're, we're making it. I'm making it. I'm building you this town, <laughs> and it's going to be great. And then we say, thank you, Tom Nook. And now... It's been silent, silent for so long. Yes. And that's why it hurts, you know, like it's just so there's nothing. There's nothing that we've seen from this game yet. And it's hard. It's hard waiting for it. Yes, um, yes definitely. Yeah. So what I think, I guess I hope this person is right. I hope they continue having a really good track record with their guesses or actually, I guess, leaks at this point if they're right, right again. <laughs> um, I guess... It, it would just be awesome. But I could also see Nintendo kind of catching on. They're like, okay, so this person's, they're getting a little too too much out there for people. Right. 
um, unless it's like Nintendo internally kind of dropping those hints. <laughs> um, oh, it could be. You never know. Because <laughs> they could, yeah, they could be sneaky like that. But regardless, <laughs> like if they want to throw some uh, some people off, they'll be like, oh no, you know what? Let's uh, wait a day. Um, right. Let's make it a different week or something. <laughs> uh, something completely unrelated to thirteen. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping that they're correct. And you you mentioned something about like I I forget your words exactly, but I will say that it made me think of every time that it's been like a pretty long gap between Nintendo Directs, mm -hmm. we do tend to get like a lot of rumors. Um, yes. So regardless of if it's like happening or not, there tend to be when it's been a long time. The rumors start to pile up, and then we tend to get a response from those. Yes, that's um, right. So Nintendo shows up. They're like, "All right, people want something. Let's <laughs> let's give them something." You know. <laughs> in 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 a way, it's their fault. You know, you know, like I said, we we can be pretty demanding. So I don't know. Maybe they just need to to work out their reveal schedule a little bit better. Maybe their directs could be more. You, you know, we could expect him like every other month, basically. But I, I know it's difficult to, to be consistent, especially because, you know, we had like the Metroid Prime 4 delay or shifting of developers. So things don't always go as planned. But I think five months in without saying anything official in general, it, it's a really long time. Yeah, that's the tough part. Like when you essentially have a huge audience of just waiting for everything that you're talking about and <laughs> and then you just like keep them waiting <laughs> right. um so i did want to ask you another question and this one might be a little tougher <laughs> but do you think there's a chance that we'll see animal crossing switch at this direct yeah that that's a tough question but I think if it's a, if we do get a drag first of all, and if it's a full drag, not not one of the minis, then I think yes, I think we're gonna see something about it. I think if the game is coming out in September or before, I think we should see some actual gameplay footage because you know it's coming out relatively soon. If the game is coming out in October or later, I think we might just see like an overall announcement. Oh, the game is coming this holiday wait for more details later in the year or maybe at E3 or maybe in a dedicated direct. So we might not actually see footage of the game if it's coming out during the holidays. But like I said, I think I'm still holding on hope that the game comes out in September. So if that's the case, I do think we're going to see it. And uh, I would just be so disappointed to not see a direct at that point or animal crossing <laughs> at that point, you know, um, cause it's been so long. It's been a long wait for this game. And, uh, I guess my thoughts are, I think we're going to see it. And it's mostly because it's been five months since we got the announcement of animal crossing. That's nearly half a year. And we haven't seen the game at all. I think it's time to get a trailer at least, you know? Yeah. Um, right. We, we don't want to go another, even if it's a couple of months, but another period without seeing it, you're, you're definitely right about that. Yeah, and I've said this before, I've been saying this in videos recently, but I just feel like Animal Crossing is a game that Nintendo needs to spend some time telling people about. Um, because it's, it's a confusing game to, you know, market because you say, Hey, you can have your own life and you can buy this house and you can pay off your mortgage and do all this regular life stuff <laughs> and it's fun, you know? <laughs> right. So I don't know. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the Considering how long it's been in, in all the rumors and the fact that something has to be shown fairly recently. We know Yoshi's coming out basically next month and, and a Kirby game for the 3DS. That's all we know. It's I think it's definitely time to know more details in not just about what's coming out soon, something like Fire Emblem, but what's coming out throughout the rest of the year, including Animal Crossing.
Yeah, and that's true. Like right now, we I've I've mentioned this also, but like we got Super Mario Bros. New Super Deluxe, you know the one. <laughs> uh, we we got that game that was like the last Nintendo game on the docket, and then they dropped out of nowhere the announcement, or well, at least the release date for Yoshi. Gave us yes. a little trailer for that, and then that was it. Like. That that's all. That's everything we know about at this point. Like we need to know more. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're totally right on that. And yeah, I'm just hoping. Uh, uh, like I don't know. It's just I keep thinking about it, and I keep thinking it's Sunday right now, and we could literally just wake up tomorrow, and everything will be different from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think yeah. that the most recent Nintendo directs have been confirmed two days before they happen so tomorrow could be the day yeah so now all i'm hoping at this point is that the direct is at a good time where i can watch it Mm. um (laughs) because it's if it's during the week uh, it's hard it's harder with my schedule now so right yeah i uh, that that's going to be the most difficult part about it um that's true yeah so Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers, Animal Crossing my fingers all the way. (laughs) And so, yeah, I guess let's move on to our next segment. And that is, this is episode number 64, or episode Nintendo 64. So we, Sergio, you actually put together a little thing. And this is the Nintendo 64 and Animal Crossing. Because the game was originally released on Animal Crossing. Um, Do you want to go over, like, all these details and things? Yes, definitely. So the very first game in the Animal Crossing series was called Dobutsu no Mori, which is Animal Forest. And like we said, that was released in Japan only for the Nintendo 64. And that was all the way back in April 2001. Essentially, the game is 18 years old. You know, this coming April. And that's a really long time. (laughs) But it, (laughs) it gave us this amazing franchise that we love. So a couple of details on the very first Animal Forest game. There were 186 different villagers. They were 55 KK songs only. And, you know, maybe you know this. I I was really looking for this information. I'm not sure if Animal Forest on the N64, if that one also had 15 villagers to start. I want to say no, because that's probably too many for the N64 to handle. But I couldn't find the, the actual information. I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure. Um, I never played the original one at all, so... Right. Yeah, I've never... I I just don't know. (laughs) It would be cool to know. I'm going to keep looking. We'll we'll let you know if we find something. But there's a lot of little details that I wasn't aware of. uh, Differences between the very first Animal Crossing game on the N64 and the one that we got as the first Animal Crossing on the GameCube throughout the rest of the world outside japan so for example in animal forest there were no able sisters so they didn't have a shop so they they just weren't around you couldn't make your own designs for clothing or umbrellas so you had to rely on the on the pre-made designs that tom nook sold that's crazy to me yeah that especially because like those characters are staples to the series like the everybody knows mabel and sable and they know about being able to make your own shirts, your own creations for the game, you know? Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's pretty crazy to know that, like, they just didn't exist in that first iteration at all. Yeah. And there's more. The main mainline characters that weren't around from the very beginning, Blathers wasn't around. There was no in-town museum. You, The only way you could check your fossils was sending them via mail to the faraway museum and i don't even remember this feature but i think it was in the gamecube animal crossing do you recall yeah so in the gamecube animal crossing when you dug up um fossils you had to send them to the faraway museum to get them i guess um identified right and so so that existed in this first game yes in that was the only way. So Blathers wasn't around. Okay. Because Blathers, like, he would still tell you to send them to Faraway Museum. So it seems interesting right. that that stuck around. Like, that was the mechanic and how you did it. And then, like, they kept it that way. But this time, 
it, it seems like Blathers was just put there so it gave you like a cool place to display <laughs> your fossils, you know? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and... that is insane. Especially like uh, once again, another staple to the series. Like yeah. everybody knows Blathers and yeah, it's such a great character too. They must have added so many lines of dialogue to make that character work. <laughs> <laughs> Because he true. talks a lot. He just blathers on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, Major Tortimer was not in Animal Forest. He was only added in the GameCube game. So he wasn't around his, and his gifts weren't around either. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All of these like huge characters that just weren't in it. Um, Tortimer is, you know, of course, the mayor. I, I wonder right. at what point they thought about that, where they're like, so who's in charge of this place? Maybe somebody <laughs> asked at some point, like just in the development team, they were testing it out or something. And they're like, so like, are you in charge? Is somebody else in charge? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty funny. That makes sense. <laughs> so <laughs> same with Cap'n. Cap'n wasn't around because there was no island. The island was also added with the GameCube games. <sighs> that that kind of <laughs> makes sense. So, uh, so with that in mind, I would imagine that there is no dock in the right. N sixty four version. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in if I remember correctly, it's always on the bottom right hand corner, right where the yes. dock is. Mm -hmm. um, well, that makes it easy. That makes it because everything's like pretty randomly generated. So. They just program that space always has the dock in the new one. Um, I guess that's how I would think about it. I'm not I'm not a developer or anything, so I wouldn't <laughs> know. But yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like it's a cool way to easily put a character in, but then also put in like a new mechanic that you can do because that's tied into like connecting your Game Boy and then all of a sudden being able to go to that new area, the new island and everything. Yes. Um, mm -hmm which also had some really cool things going on, um, <laughs> which obviously would not have been in the N64 game. Yeah, right, right. Mm, just a couple more little fun, unusual tidbits. In the N64 version of Animal Forest, the villagers would not react if you hit them with the net. I guess they were immune. <laughs> <laughs> and Oops. also Bl Bianca or Blanca, Blanca. Bianca is a villager. Blanca is not present in the game. Yeah. Uh, could you... Now, that uh, this gives me a question. Could you visit other towns with, in the N64 game at all? Yes, I believe you could, but you needed to have two of the memory uh, control packs that were, you know, you would plug them in the back of the controller. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think uh, it, was, it was a little bit more troublesome than in the GameCube, which is a little troublesome to begin with. So imagine that. That's pr Yeah, it is. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's really cool. I did not... Uh, all of these things were super awesome because I didn't know. this. Uh, I had a question, though. Um, it wasn't mm -hmm. about the villagers being struck by a net. Um, oh, I don't remember. I'm trying to. Not Blanca? <laughs> no, it's not about Blanca. It was if... Um, I, I can't remember. Okay. I, I had it, but it's gone. <laughs> um, well, shucks. It, it was a good question, too. I think it had to do... <laughs> it must have had to do with something with the shops or anything. I don't know. So mm. K.K. Slider showed up in this game, which is, of course... Like, he's got to show up. He's got to... He's the... Yes. Do you happen to know if he did the same thing where he greeted you at the beginning? Mm, I want to say yes, because I know in this game you had to set the clock manually. So maybe he was the one that, that you know, when he initiates you, he, he would ask you what time it is. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's something I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's... It's fascinating to me. I, I tend to forget easily that this series actually started on the Nintendo 64. Of course, you know, most of us, the, the vast majority of us, only played it on the GameCube if we started from the very beginning. But it is definitely a fact, and it's true that it began on the Nintendo 64 all the way in 2001. Did you have the N64 re version? No. Me neither. No. <laughs> I still want to get it. Because I've heard 
um, from Emily with two E's that if you swap out like the back casing of the N64 cartridge, it'll play on a US um, system. Oh, right, right. So I've been tempted to order one and try that out and actually like play <laughs> the original Animal Crossing game. Um, Cause that would be awesome. It'd be really cool yeah. to like get a look at what this was at the very beginning of of its life, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I'd want to see like some more little quirky things that happen in that game. Cause it's it's crazy like how much it had, but also how much it didn't have. And even like looking back at each game, um, especially since New Leaf, like you look back and you're like, oh man, you couldn't do very much in this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but somehow it was still the greatest game ever. <laughs> yes, definitely. And it, it's it's honestly very impressive that the Nintendo 64 could run a game, even if it was, I don't know, 70% of, of the Animal Crossing that we got on the GameCube. That's still pretty crazy to me <laughs> that the 64 could handle that. Yeah, I will say one of the fun things about the GameCube version of the game is that because they already had, it was based directly off that N64 one, and because it was already mm -hmm. such a small file size, essentially you put the disc into your GameCube, loaded up your file, and then from there you could just take the disc out. Like the entire <laughs> game was loaded at that point. Right. Um, because it, it was just it was on the GameCube, like, RAM or whatever. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it's crazy that it was that small a game size, you know, the file yeah. size. And, yeah, and it makes sense because it came from the N64 cartridge, which how much data could those things hold? Like, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> it was, I, I, but I remember it was kilobytes. <laughs> so it, was, it wasn't That's much. crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, that is you know, insane. So for our 64th episode, we, we did want to play some homage to the Nintendo 64 and where Animal Crossing began. Yeah, I I want to get it now. Every time <laughs> we, it comes up, I'm just like, you know, uh, it's not that expensive. Maybe I'll just order it to have as part of the collection and then right. also play it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to our next topic for today, and that is towns, towns, and more towns. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Sergio, you also came up with this. Do you want to take over for this uh, round? Yes, definitely. And, you know, we know that the town is, is the heart of, of our experience in Animal Crossing, so we wanted to discuss them. We want to talk about what we like about the towns the way they are, what we don't like, what we want to see added to them in Animal Crossing Switch, and what we don't want to see added to them because, you know, there might be some things that we just don't want. So, Chewie, what do you like about towns the way they are now? I The first thing that came to me was that there's a lot of variety in little tiny features to the game. Things like ponds, um, for example, like... As soon as you told me, I, I think at some point this past year, uh, it came up in our Discord channel and somebody mentioned that like you can have different amounts of ponds in yes, your New right. Leaf town. And I was like, that's really cool. I didn't even think about that. And I think you could probably get like different amounts of rocks and things. And they also have different shapes, different sizes of ponds and that sort of yes. thing. Um, but yeah, just like the little varieties and features. I really like also the ramp varieties. Um, and you saw a lot oh. of different ones in New Leaf, even though like there's uh, there's one cliff, of course, that takes you down to the beach. But it's cool to go to a different town and be like, oh, you have a really different ramp than I do to get down to your beach area. <laughs> And so I always felt like I kind of had like some basic ramps that weren't too interesting in mine. <laughs> but whenever I see other people's ramps, I'm like, oh, that is I like that. I like that look better, <laughs> you yes. know, like and that just yeah. happens with the little tiny details of Animal Crossing for me. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to keep going through like my likes? Because I have several. Yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. The other thing I like rivers a lot and 
I, I remember being like a kid and like playing by some little river that passed by uh, by our neighbor's house. And I would always like try to dig little holes and make the water go some other di- direction, you know, because <laughs> nice. um, it was it was fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the rivers in Animal Crossing, but I specifically like the rivers in um, I think City Folk did this, but I know um, the GameCube population growing did this. Um, but when the river split into different directions, um, ah. and I guess the thing with, uh, the GameCube one that's very unique is when you had a really long portion of the river that needed another island to like cross it. So it was like to a bridge that led to this little island in the middle of the river to another bridge that led you across the river. Um, mm. if that mm. makes sense, if you could visualize that. <laughs> so it's a very long river. And there's an island in the middle and two bridges to get across. Right, it. right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like that variety. And I like the variety when it splits, too. Um, mm. This other thing, I've actually, I know a lot of people don't like this feature. And it's probably because of the terror that people faced with it in City Folk. But that's the animal mm-hmm. tracks. So... In City Folk, if you re- a lot of people, unfortunately, we all ran into this problem where after a while you start to notice your town is just a bunch of dirt. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's because you've been running around all over the place. The animal tracks that you've been making have eroded the, f- the grass, the beautiful grass in your town. Yes. <laughs> um, and so now you just have like a, you live in dirt. <laughs> um, but... I feel I really feel like they fixed it a lot in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Like it was yes. a little it was harder to erode your grass like that. And so, I don't know. I like it mostly because I I made my town in New Leaf and I had it all set up with like paths and things. And after a while I was just like these paths just don't make as much sense during the season. Like the color scheme is a little off. So when the seasons would change, I feel like the paths just, they didn't look as good. Like there was a lot of upkeep. Like you had to go through, move all the paths and then place them all again. If you wanted to change like a season, have something that looked better in that season. But with the animal tracks, like those always kind of look good. Like just making your own little dirt paths across everywhere. Um, So I don't know. I like the animal tracks for that reason. Um, The other thing I like uh, this is another grass related thing but also like another little tiny feature but i also like that the grass has different patterns like you know you can have the triangles the circles the squares um i think uh, were there stars i don't remember i think that mm. just depended on the season like when it snowed oh. i think one of them had stars on the floor um but regardless i like the the little patterns on the floor <laughs> that's what i like <laughs> Nice. Um, the other thing I really like is cliffs. And for a while, I don't know, I went back to a game, I, I think population growing, because, you know, the cliffs were much more prominent in that game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I went back to it, I was I had a town with like two cliffs. And I don't know, I was like, man, it's kind of a hassle to get up and down these things and find a path around my town. (laughs) Like you spent a long time and the town was so big in that game. Like it was the biggest town that you could have. I just felt like I was walking forever to get to everything. But in hindsight, like it made sense to make it that big because there weren't like different areas in the town. There was just essentially that like once you were in the main town, that's where everything lived. You know, nowadays it's separated Mm -hmm. by, you have your town, you have your main street, you have your happy home showcase, and that's about it, you know? Um, right. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and but now thinking about it, I'm just like, I, I like the cliffs. I like that thing that I was telling you about where people have different cliffs or different ramps that go up and down their cliffs. I think Animal Crossing right. Population Growing had the best variety of that. Um, so I was into that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, those are the things that I like about towns in general. Like, they're very, I guess, small things and kind of focused around the nature of it, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So so what do you like about the towns? Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything you said. And 
the the natural aspect of it is it's actually one of the likes that comes to to mind really quickly the the rural feel of it you know there's a lot of grass and trees there's no asphalt no roads uh, so no no flashy lights it's very very rural very fresh and green I, I really like that about pretty much any town even if if you add paths or, or public works project it still feels you know like almost like a forest very green very fresh i also like that it's very natural like you're one with nature you're out in the open for the most part and you know there's bugs and fish around there's a lot of fresh air fresh fruit a lot of sunshine so it's it's very like you're there it, it definitely makes you feel like you're you're out there just enjoying nature in, in this amazing town yeah it definitely gives you it definitely gives you some of those like garden of eden types of vibes like this is just the perfect <laughs> place to live you know um <laughs> Yeah, which is which is great. Everybody needs a really nice place to live. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely. I also like that, you know, in every game, there's really very easy access to the beach. It's just, it's just go downstream and it's there. And sometimes you have two ways to access it, but it's, it's always there. You can always enjoy a day at the beach very, very easily. So I love that. <laughs> yeah, that is really nice. Like... It's cool that the game has, like, so many terrains worked into it, um, just kind of naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm into it. I, it just feels like a world that's, like, nice to be in all the time. Yes. <laughs> um, so you also asked me about dislikes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I listed one. And I feel like everybody could guess what it would be, but it's limits on where trees can grow. I, I, I don't know. It's a magical world. I just said that it's an amazing place to be. Let trees grow wherever you plant them. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that one doesn't make sense. Specifically, the cedar saplings. I need them to <laughs> grow in the southern half of my town. I need that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And it's true, you know, it's hard to come up with something that we don't like. I, I only have one listed as well. And it's basically that I want more areas. I, I You know, it's it's nice to have the town, the beach. In the later games, we also have the, the street side or, or the city side, like Main Street. But I want more. I want more areas in, in I guess, the next section that we're going to talk about is what we actually want added in to towns in Animal Crossing Switch. So I'll go over more detail as to what areas I would want added to my town. That sounds good. Um, yeah, I guess I have one that I would want to add. Mm. I would want to add something like terraforming. Mm. And I, I mean, like, it's cool that in Pocket Camp... And I know a lot of people don't care for Pocket Camp or play it very much. But in Pocket Camp, you can pick different terrains for your campsite. And it could be like a mountain terrain or a meadow or or like someplace snowy or someplace underwater, you know? Um, Yes. (laughs) So there are options for how your where your camp is, what it looks like. And I guess I we're kind of focused on the nature aspect to animal crossing and we both really like kind of that foresty type of thing. Cause it is called like animal forest in Japanese. Right. <laughs> um, so it makes sense that it's a forest and everything, but it, it's not the only place where animals come from, you know? <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> it would be cool to have some sort of control over the different areas of your town and how they look. And we already got like, we're, we're, we've been getting little tastes of that. Like, um, for example, in Happy Home Designer, when you placed a home, like you had this cool map and you could place it like in a desert, by a city, by the beach, um, by a river. You had all of these different places where you can set uh, somebody's home, you know? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I want to see that like kind of I want to have some control over that in the next game. Like I want to be able to see a place that's like. For example, like we have all of these modern style um, public works projects that just feel out of place in the nature aspect of the game. Yes. Like right. it'd be cool if people could like modernize their place and make it seem more industrial, more like a city, um, something that like works with that aesthetic that they're going for. Um, right. But yeah, as far as like 
picking different trains. Like we could keep the forest. We could do a desert, beach, mountain, swamps, whatever, you know, like there are a lot of different places that people can go and it'd just be cool to see that in the, ne in the next game. Yes. And like you mentioned, there's, there's predecessors to that. And I think the biggest one is the most recent one, which is pocket camp, how relatively easily, well, you know, considering if you spend the money or you just use your leave tickets, but once you have it, you can change it whenever you want. I'm thinking for the next game, if we do get some sort of terraforming, it might be something like an ordinance. So you might have a beach layout and then it might take maybe, I don't know, maybe a, two weeks or maybe a month before you can change it. And maybe it changes gradually, like, like you know, it naturally would. I, I, I would definitely love to see something like that. Yeah, I, I'm for it. Like I said, it, it'd be cool to have that implemented and just have a different look for your town that just shows, you know, your own unique sensibilities. Yes, definitely. So what's something that you would want? I want bigger towns. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the first thing that comes to mind. I So at the very least, I would want them to be at least twice the size of Neoleaf. But I think my personal sweet spot would be three times and i know that sounds a little too big maybe but i think if we can get 15 villagers maybe 18 maybe 18 might be still good enough and that would also you know we that would give us room for those new villagers and also for more public work projects and also for more unique areas so i think either two or three times the size of nearly would be perfect um, yeah, I think that would be cool, especially if we, and I have an idea about this a little bit later, but yeah, the mostly based around like public works projects, I think it's, they were fun there. It's really fun to build a public works project and like make an area like a park, for example, like there are a lot of really cool park yes. items mm -hmm. and that like, once you have them all out there, like that takes quite a bit of space in your town. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think a bigger town would be worth it just to give you more space to control more, build more. And maybe, and I don't know, I guess a lot of people get mad at Tom Nook for charging, for always upgrading your house, like always giving something for you to work toward. But I think right. that's like where the fun of the game comes from, you know, like always having something else to work toward. And so it'd be cool if they added like maybe even being able to expand your town after growing it a bit. Yes, yes, um, definitely. So, yeah, maybe like as your place becomes more full of villagers, more businesses come in, more things get built, um it starts to reward you by saying, "Hey, uh we're we're growing a lot. Let's make this town a little bit bigger. Uh, this project costs like 500,000 bells." And then you're like, of course, yes, I want to pay that off right now <laughs> and build a huge town, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm all for finding other ways to expand the gameplay and give you more and more to do because we've mentioned it before, like the Switch is going to have a long life cycle. Nintendo has made that clear. And so I feel like the Animal Crossing game that comes to Switch has to have a long life cycle, especially if we're waiting mm. seven plus years for the next game. <laughs> like we need <laughs> to be able to enjoy it for at least half of that, you know? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, so I'm for it. I want to see a huge town. <laughs> <laughs> and so th this actually, uh, so this gets me into what another one of my wants. Um, mm. So I kind of want to go back to where the shops were integrated within the town. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so it's not so much like you have the main street area and then your town area, you know? And I know you mentioned, like, you wanted more areas, and I'm still down for that. I just want them to be, like, a little bit different. Um, mm. But as far as, like, the shops themselves, like, I want them to be back in the main town because I feel like you had, and I forget who mentioned this. I think it was um, our guests from Beltry Forums. Um mm. And they mentioned that they liked the older games that had all of the shops in the same town because that kind of added to the variety you would see in the town. For example, the museum got moved to the main street. But the museum yes, used to right. always just be in the main part of your town. 
And so it was always like a surprise when you'd go to somebody else's place and you're like, oh, your museum's all the way over here. Mine's on this side or, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is kind of how I would like to have it integrated. Um, In New Leaf, you didn't start with every shop. Um, Your main street was pretty bare bones at the beginning. Um, What did you have at the beginning? Was it essentially Able Sisters? um, Mm -hmm. Timmy and Tommy's shop and the museum museum nook's homes and the photo booth yeah and photo i think booth. that's about it yeah and nook's homes right right um yeah so you had like five things in the game and then everything started coming in yes and mm-hmm. so the way i would like to see it happen is you start with like the bare minimum of the shops in your animal crossing town at first. And then you have something happen similar to like club LOL where Dr. Shrunk or whoever the shop owner is would come to you and say, Hey, I really like your town. I'd re- I think it'd be great for my business. Can I open up a shop here? Um, if you're the one that they go to, to do that, like if you're the mayor right. or whatever. Um, but it'd be cool if like they, came and they talked to you and they said oh awesome i'm i'm approved where can i build this and then you got to like pick where you built that shop right Hmm. so i don't know i think it would add to the fun and give uh, give everybody kind of another way to really make a unique town that nobody else knows because like when you go when i go to your town like, I know exactly what I'm going to see in Main Street. The only difference is, is the museum on the left or is it on the right? Right, um, right. But if I go to your town under this situation, I have no idea where your shops are going to be or how you decorate or how you lay out everything. Like, it's just going to give you a, a much more expressive town, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that, that was my idea. And I think it's difficult just because um, I think whatever ta- whatever shops you start with at the beginning of the game, a lot of people are going to be resetting a lot to make sure those are in the right spot. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, that's true. Yeah, so I'd say that's the biggest challenge with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But that would also work really well with, with our desire for bigger towns. You know, it, there would be a lot more room to accommodate these separate stores instead of having like a, a city or a street area. That's true, too. That would be great, too. <laughs> yeah so another one for me like like i mentioned i want more areas and i do want areas that are not necessarily shops or stores for example it's more more like a, an actual forest area maybe you could go there and find mushrooms or different things maybe also you know we, we've talked in the in previous episodes about caves randomly generated caves that you could explore just to get like minerals or ore or different materials that would be pretty cool. Maybe some hills for hiking or rock climbing. Maybe a small desert with a small oasis. Not nothing too too big because I still want it to feel like it's part of town. Maybe just like in the outskirts of town, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I like this idea a lot too. Just because I like the idea of having more to explore that's beyond the town. Because it's always... Yes. I, I remember when you'd go to a new town in population growing wild world city folk it was always or even new leaf you get on to that train you walk through those gates and you're just like what is in between both of our towns what is going (laughs) on that we just don't get to see that's outside of our world essentially um so i like the idea of having different uh, areas to explore like randomly generated areas to explore that we don't usually get, and it's a pretty casual thing, just like, oh, this day you can get extra mushrooms. This day you can get extra ores, you know? Um, so, yeah, I would like that. I would like that a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as actual shop-like additions, yeah, I, I, I would want to see more things added in. I was thinking maybe like a small candy store, a pastry shop that, that would be next to the roost. Um, I remember Grizzly Nina from our Discord. She had an excellent idea and even like a little drawing of a music store that would be run by KK Slider. So I would love a lot of shops or new new shops like that. 
for K- sure. Oh, that uh, KK Slider with his own shop would be so great. <laughs> I love going into like record stores and just looking around. It would be my favorite shop to go to. Um, <laughs> but it would be re- especially cool. One of my favorite things about Splatoon um, is that they've spent a lot of time kind of building building this kind of music scene within the game where Mm. you have tons of different bands that play all this different music. And so like, they're usually the tracks that you hear while you're splatting essentially. Right. Um, But it would be cool. Like if KK Slider's got his own shop, like maybe there's some other musical animals out there that have some cool music to show. Like, so, (laughs) so for example, like we're used to getting all of KK Slider songs and putting them into our own CD players, record players, whatever we have, you know, but it'd also yes. be pretty cool if other musical animals showed up and you could start buying their albums and that sort of thing and kind oh. of like give you a more a, a wider variety of music. Because um, we know KK right. Slider's thing is like he does it all. He does all of these things <laughs> um, right. and makes all this different music that because he's, you know, he's awesome. Um but it'd be cool to see like more bands pop up that are like, oh, we make this kind of music or we make this. And this is just I don't know. I always with any like storyline, with any like game thing, I always fall toward wanting to do something like that with like music. So um, mm-hmm. I'm sure my friend Edwin's listening to this and he's just remembering like our college project um, that we did for fun. Um, we made like a little animated cartoon thing, which is terrible. It's so bad, but the script (laughs) I wrote was all like just how these people meet to form a band. Everything I I do is always about people meeting and forming a band. (laughs) Um, so anyways, I, I bring that up too, because I remember using like a Julian, you know, the unicorn like cut out for one of the characters and a bunch of different (laughs) little Animal Crossing characters to make it. It's so bad. Maybe I'll share it with you after (laughs) and I'll share it with, uh, I don't know. It's embarrassing. (laughs) Um, But anyways, yes, I'm all for KK Slider having a music shop. Yes, definitely, and and I really like your idea of having different musical animals. Maybe, maybe we could have bigger concerts, more more actual live concerts with with a big stage, and and pretty much everyone in town goes to visit. Yeah, it, that would be cool to do for like a festival kind of thing. Yeah, um, especially like during the holidays, um, whatever holiday is going on, like it'd be cool to have right. like a live band playing and all the people bringing their shops, at, like <laughs> outdoor versions of their shops there's so many cool things i would like to see in the game (laughs) and it would just be fun it'd be fun (laughs) oh yeah for sure but as is there anything that you wouldn't want to see in towns in animal crossing switch um i think the biggest thing is just i want to see a more uh, one of the big reasons i want to see like a lot of the shops implemented within the town is that i just want to see less loading screens um Mm. I feel like New Leaf is a game of loading screens. Um, you walk out of your home, it loads. You walk into your home, it loads. You walk to the main street, it loads. Um, every building you walk in and out of, you're loading, you know? And so yes. you just run into a lot of loading screens. And I don't know, it, it cuts into your time uh, after a while. And yeah, because you just try to do something really quickly. And then you're like, man... I just went through like four loading screens to pull this off (laughs) and now it's finally done. How much faster would that have gone if I didn't have to load so much? So it's a small thing and you don't have to wait that long, but the less you have to wait, the better, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, they are small, but you like you said, they add up and they definitely do. And we, we also talked about how they can get in the way when you're chatting with someone and then you, you start loading and you, the chat message goes away and maybe you didn't catch it. So they there's definitely a lot of improvement in terms of loading screens. And I think a big part of it is the fact that maybe Nintendo has been working too much with that original small N64 file size. So maybe that's why it's taken a while to really start shaking off some of the the foundation elements that were a little bit 
on the older side and not as optimized as they could be, including the loading times. Yeah, I think they could optimize it and make it really nice. Um, right. Yeah, and, and I I don't know. I guess my suspicions is they've been working on this game. I'd imagine like two, three years now. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm sure they've had time to like work on that, make it really great. So yeah, I, I'm I'm hopeful. Yeah, definitely. Now, as for something I don't want to see in towns in the next game, I know some people want this, and and I can see why. You know, if if the towns are gonna be bigger, I can see. Why it would make sense to have streets, maybe even vehicles, cars, scooters. But personally, I would prefer not to have those items. I would prefer to keep it all green and and natural. I think, you know, if you start adding streets or asphalt, it kind of takes away from that feeling. I, I feel like Animal Crossing makes you feel really safe, that you can just run around at top speed and and you're you really you know you wouldn't be concerned with anything but i feel like if there's a street and there's maybe vehicles you wouldn't you wouldn't feel as safe i know in the game you probably wouldn't get run over or things like that but i still wouldn't feel right just running around if there's roads and vehicles you know and (laughs) this makes me think like there's something very funny about this is another example from from population growing, but it's very funny to see like a character like Gracie show up with her car and she's just <laughs> sitting there like, you know, in the middle of your town. And you're just like, how did you drive here? Like <laughs> it, there are no roads in this place. There's this giant cliff that you'd have to get down a bridge to cross <laughs> on the river that's clearly <laughs> smaller than your car is so like how did you get here <laughs> and there's something charming about that like there, it's very nice to see something so out of place in the world um like us right. and it it adds to the effect of it because you know like gracie is this big designer they come from the city and everything, and just that is the opposite of what your little town is in Animal Crossing, you know? Um, right. But at the same time, like, I totally get what you're coming, where you're coming from, where, like, it makes sense that people would want it because maybe they do want to make, like, like I mentioned earlier, like a modernized type of town that has that mm-hmm. vibe. So, I don't know. I, I guess right. I feel like it would be okay as an option, but... I think it's tough to like just have that from the get go for people, you know? Yes. Right. Yeah. I feel like you need to, uh, I don't know. I want this game to be something that you really build up and make something awesome out of it. And Mm. if it starts like a rural little place, I think that makes it more special, you know, like you can tell all of the changes that you've made to your town from one point, like from beginning to end you know right right Mm -hmm. yeah especially you because you're gonna record like every minute of your gameplay and it's gonna be (laughs) really cool to see like the very first days of your town and then go to (laughs) now where you you got like this futuristic looking place which you probably won't do but (laughs) if that were a thing that you could it would be cool to see it happen yeah yeah definitely (laughs) Um, so did you have anything else to say about these, uh, topics before we move on to our Haken's Villager Corner? No, I think that's it. Cool. Well then, let's go ahead and move on to Haken's Villager Corner, and I'll probably do a poll about this later, but my friend Edwin, who I mentioned earlier, (laughs) also made a good point where he's like, could you just call it, like, Haken Town Hall? And I was like, oh yeah, I guess people do have, like, town hall meetings and... That makes sense. Oh. (laughs) So maybe I'll do a poll. But for now, it's Haken's Villager Corner. Classic, (laughs) what we've called it. So anyways, for those who don't know, we ask a question to our patrons every week, and we feature their answers on the show. So this week's question is, do you want cooking in Animal Crossing? And the reason I asked this was because more than anything, on all of the videos that I posted about like what fans want to see in Animal Crossing, this one was the most divisive thing. Oh. So <laughs> there are tons of people who want cooking and tons of people who do not want cooking. So Sergio, let's start with you. Pro? Nay? nay do you want it? Do you not? I do, but I don't want it to be mandatory. I want it to be you know, completely optional and not for improving like your 
I don't want a hunger meter. I don't want to get to get buffed like extra luck if you eat something. I just want it to be an extra that maybe you can bake a cake or some pastries for one of your villagers just as a gift. Something simple. Maybe make a little mini game out of it, but nothing too too complicated. I don't want the experience to feel like it takes you away from where you were in in your town. And that makes sense. I think it would be very annoying to go from a game where you didn't ever have to eat to one where all of a sudden, if you don't, you're punished in some way. Right. Um, right. Cause, cause you know, animal crossing is supposed to be relaxing and there's, if there's something like a regular earthly need of hunger to satisfy like that, that takes away from it. Like this is our right. special place where we can do whatever we want and, there aren't many things that like get in the way of that, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So that makes sense. I think for me, I think there'd be cool ways to do it. I think it'd be pretty fun to have it. I don't, I think, um, yeah, I guess overall I would not mind having to cook as long as it's like you said, an optional thing, but I think there are also like cool things that you could do with it. For example, um, if there were like a restaurant in the game and you could go and get some dishes or get some recipes and then all of a sudden you can cook those, like you said, for your friends and um, right. like maybe make them something special for their birthday. Like you learn to make a birthday cake. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it'd be cool. And also, I just want all of the little items to be able to place in my home, like all of the yes, cooking that. items because they're adorable. <laughs> they're so cute. Um so, yeah, that's most of why I want cooking, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So let's go ahead and see what our patrons had to say. And we'll go ahead and go back and forth. And I can start with Lyalatron, who says, No, I don't want it. It could be a dark path to status effects and complicating a fun game to play. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, so this is an example of somebody who doesn't want it in the game, you know? And the status effects, it could be, like, something like, I don't know, maybe it makes you faster for the day or luckier for the day or, you know, something mm -hmm. special. Or maybe it gives you, like, senses so you can tell where a fossil is. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, like, yeah, it, it would be strange to have that kind of mechanic in Animal Crossing. So I could see why people are against it, you know? Yes, yes, definitely. Their next answer is by Emily with two E's. And she says, I would love cooking, not as a survival method, though. I think it would be cute to have the villagers ask you to bake or cook something for them, and you can collect ingredients and make it for them. Then they can give you more recipes and prices. Maybe even make a minigame out of it, like Cooking Mama. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cute, too. Um, minigames are always fun, I think. And maybe, you know, like, I didn't even consider, like, cooking could just be added to the game as a mini game like it's not technically cooking in the real world but it's just like well the real world of animal crossing you know but it's just a right. game that you play <laughs> yeah and you gave me you definitely added to that idea when you said about a restaurant maybe if you work there part-time like you do with with brewster at the roost then maybe that could be the mini game at the restaurant Oh, that's true. That would be pretty fun. I would not, <laughs> I would like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I also like, I would want to be able to collect ingredients and things. Um, cause, it, cause that's, that part's really fun in the harvest festival or is that what it's called? Um, the Thanksgiving. Yes. So yeah. Uh, when you do the harvest stuff, that's really fun where you can get all of these different ingredients and things for the food that you're making for that dinner. Right. Yeah. So Zekin says, if it's for buffs, then no, not really. But if it's a mini game that you and a couple of villagers could do together, like with Franklin and Thanksgiving, this is exactly what we've been saying. Then, yeah, <laughs> give give me more things to do with our villagers. <laughs> and so I, I feel like we're all simultaneously coming to the same thing. <laughs> um, I guess where people are like the people who want it don't want it to be a huge part of the game but more of just like a little extra bonus to what you can do yes and i i like the the thought of including all the villagers or other villagers not it's it's not just the main player doing the cooking i like that yeah 
Next answer is by Alex or Coconut. And he says, I would agree with Emily, Verity, and Second so far, as long as it's a small addition to the game. Actually, them saying it could be a small mini game makes me want it even more. Animal Crossing thrives of cute little tasks, in my opinion. And yeah, I really doubt they'll give status effects. That just feels so non Animal Crossing. <laughs> Yeah, so we're all getting down to the same thing because the next one is from Emily with a cookie and she says, if it's anything like Emily with two E's idea, then yes. <laughs> so the Emily's are in the same boat right now. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, it seems like a lot of us are kind of feeling that like eh, maybe a mini game will work, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so since Emily's was so short, I'll do Grizzly Nina's here. She's got a long one. <laughs> and she says, yes, I think it would be a fun addition that would only enhance Animal Crossing's real world feeling. I posted my thoughts on your YouTube comment collection. Uh, yeah, YouTube comment collection. So I hope this isn't too repetitive. But here's my idea. Joan is going to be the gateway into cooking. In past games, we have already experienced gardening with her red turnip sales. I think she could easily sell other root vegetables in Animal Crossing Switch. They would need daily watering, but planting these would be not much different than the fruit orchards many players already create. Once harvested, you could choose to sell your veggies at Joan's New Sunday Farmer's Market or chop up and cook delicious gifts for your favorite villagers. A fun new feature that doesn't have to drastically change the mechanics of the game. This is a well-built-out way to look at it. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I really like the idea of giving Joan more, uh, more of a character in this game because for so long she's... I mean... You could talk to her for hours because she, I don't know how many lines of dialogue they wrote in for her, but she just keeps <laughs> going if you talk to her. Um, but it would be especially fun. Like, I miss the red turnips in Wild World. Like, that was one of my favorite things about Wild right. World, that you could get another type of turnip that you had to plant and take care of every single day. Otherwise, it dies and then you're sad because you're down right. a thousand bells. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I would love to see like more things that you could buy and bury and plant and grow and because I don't know, I for a long time Wild World especially like planting a bunch of I guess fruit trees was how I made my money. And so if I just had more different like vegetables and fruits to plant and get more money, I'm I'm okay with that. I don't think that's a bad mechanic that like completely breaks the game you know it sounds like it's something right. that would naturally come to the game yes exactly especially through joan definitely that's a that's a really great idea and i i would love a farmer's market in the game <laughs> for sure That'd yeah be amazing. definitely because it also makes me think of like the flea market in wild world and city folk where you got to like sell your own things or go to somebody else's places and buy their things um right yeah so a farmer's market that could be fun too like maybe everybody <laughs> has their own little gardens that they grow and then they'll sell you cool things <laughs> yeah definitely oh that would be so awesome <laughs> so next we have answer by tab and the answer is, I don't really have a strong opinion on this one. As long as we get food items to decorate our living spaces, I'm good either way. So Tab agrees with you that we want to see the items. We want to be able to place them on our kitchen, on our rooms, on shelves. That would be awesome. Yeah, I am all for that. I would want that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so Verity says, I like the idea. I know a lot of people aren't a fan, and I understand why. Firstly, I think it would tie in well with the idea of being a business owner instead of the mayor. If people could own a restaurant or bakery and cook their own goods, I also think cooking would make use of town fruit if we were able to make fruit juices. Each town has their own town fruit special fruit, so people can have unique fruit drinks and foods depending on their native fruit. A small allotment would would also be a cute idea, which hopefully would open up the idea of new veggies to grow that's not just turnips. Making hot chocolate or coffee at home in a mug would be a neat little feature. Maybe on winter nights, our character gets the shivers or sneezes. A hot chocolate will warm them back up and act almost as medicine. 
that may be a bit far, but or maybe they could just keep it as simple as just cooking foods for display pur purposes only. Stuff that was once just bought as furniture items. Um, so there's a lot going on on this one. <laughs> um, but it, you kind of chuckled at something. What stood out to you in this? Oh, the, I want juices. I definitely want juices. And then I could also just see myself like making coffee every morning in real <laughs> life and in the game. That would be so amazing. I would for <laughs> sure make some hot chocolate. I, I still don't drink coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a little kid. I, it tastes like too bitter for me. <laughs> um, but I would make hot chocolate all day, every day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't even think of doing like juices. I think that would be really nice because we do have like um, items that look like little little juices in a fancy cup. And it'd be nice to like be able to make those on your own. Um, I guess that's a form of crafting, right? So I don't know. It'd be yeah. cool. It'd be fun. Yeah, definitely. Next we have Cheryl Jones. And the answer is... Yes, I like it as another activity. Would be fun to collect recipes and give the resulting dishes to villagers or other majors. And, you know, Cheryl's answer goes back to that. We want to be able to do it to, to share it with others. You make the food, you bake a cake or some pastries, and then you take it over or you, you prepare it because you have a play date. And it just makes sense to, you know, to bring something nice to eat. Yeah, and I really like the this real simplicity in the way this is put. But yes, I'd like another activity. And mm -hmm. this goes back to what I was saying. Like, we need this Animal Crossing game to last a very long time. Especially if we're going to be waiting seven years for the next game to come out. <laughs> um, and having another activity, that would be nice. Like, it would just be nice to have something else to do while you're playing the game. Yes, definitely. So Sarah says, I don't care too much whether it's in the game or not, but I think I it would definitely be interesting to see how they would introduce cooking. We've already gotten a taste of it during the Harvest Festival where we can bring ingredients like sugar, vinegar, and flour to Franklin. If Animal Crossing Switch brings cooking to us, I'd like, to, I'd like for it to be easy, carefree, and optional. It would also be cute to be able to use some of our kitchen furniture like refrigerators and ovens. I'd like to be able to bake birthday cakes for my villagers and throw a party for them like they do for us. And yeah, Ooh. I I like that idea of putting it that way where it's like the these villagers care about us. They throw us a little party and the least we can do is do that back, you know? <laughs> Right. And oh, I really like the idea, for example, you open the fridge and it's it's its own little storage for, you know, food related items that should go in the fridge. But it looks like the sub menu, like when you open a locker room, <laughs> oh, that, that would be so cool. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> awesome uh, to have like separate types of storage units. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next, we have Dragon. Dragonflame 323, and he says, I would like cooking as a way to increase friendship with villagers, baking them a cake, for example, as a new kind of side job, or being able to make certain dishes which are unique to that cooking feature and you can't find elsewhere, so you can display it at your home. Maybe you can gather up mushrooms during the fall season and make a mushroom stew. Yeah, I like that too, like making something unique that you can't usually find in the store. Yeah, and also displaying them at your kitchen, in your home, or maybe just adding them to like a catalog. And, and you, if there's a lot of recipes, maybe you kind of have to do each one. Yeah, if I had a recipe book to fill in for this, I would be, <laughs> I would do that all the time, all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so a penguin named Abraham says, if they can make it fit well into the game, then sure. I'm all for new content and big changes in the next game. That's what made New Leaf so exciting for me. So I'd be I'd be happy to see them take a risk like that. And I think the, I, I mentioned this, I, I forget where, but one of the worries, I think it might have been in our worries thing. One of the big worries when New Leaf was coming out was that it was going to be too samey from what we've already gotten in Animal Crossing. And that mostly came from the the fact that the switch from Wild World to City Folk wasn't too big. And so when right. when New Leaf came around, it was like, oh, wow, there were these big major changes that happened to the game that made it overall 
a great game. Like New Leaf is, I would say, the best game of the series. Um, yes. Just based on like all of the different things you can do and how great it is. And so when they take risks like that, when they add new things, I think that's when the game shines because they add things that make sense to the world. They add things in a way that makes sense to the world too. And that like, it feels like it was the obvious way to grow it. You know, like once you see it, you're like, of course, that makes so much sense. Like, I can't believe I didn't even (laughs) think about that, you know, and that might be what's the most surprising thing with this next game. Like we whatever they add, like we may not have even thought about it yet. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's exciting. I'm excited to see how they change it. Yes. The next answer is by Cyber Giro, and he says, Yes, maybe because it could be turned into a cool new event, seasonally or monthly, where some of the villagers try to cook the best seasonal food. Oh, I like that a lot. I definitely want to see the villagers involved in all the cooking. I What I like about that is that that would kind of give the game more of like a unique holiday that's very specific to Animal Crossing too, like a unique event. Um so, yeah, I'm into that. I would love to see, like, a chili cook-off during the summer or something. Right. Because <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Or we could see who can make the best turkey. I'm sorry, Franklin. <laughs> um, but it would it would be fun. It would be, I'm into it. Uh, so Jam says, I would like it as an option to make gifts for villagers, but not as a compulsory part of the game. So, yeah, more gifts and less more optional as well (laughs) right Mm -hmm. and our last answer is by our newest patrons arden and herman and they say yes yes and yes (laughs) so they they definitely agree they want to see cooking and i think overall most of the answers do agree as long as it's not required as long as it's not very buff induced like it really punishes you in a way if you don't want to cook yeah we definitely don't want that but overall we want to see something and i think like you were saying nintendo takes risks and makes them into features that make sense in the end and i think i have a good feeling that cooking is going to be one of them yeah that's true um yeah i love it i'm i was pretty excited to see what everybody had to say especially because we did get an overwhelming yes in this but I can't tell you how many people were just like avidly <laughs> against it. Like they really do not want cooking. <laughs> I think somebody went as far as to say like this would completely ruin the game. <laughs> it would just not be <laughs> Animal Crossing. Um, so, yeah, it was fun. But regardless, thank you all so much for your answers. And it's been fun. So thank you so much for listening. If you want to be part of the conversation on all things Animal Crossing, please join our Discord. I have a link in the description of this podcast. It's totally free to join. You don't have to be a patron or anything. And if you do join, you can get Sergio and my friend codes um, for Pocket Camp, 3DS, all the good stuff, you know? And if you do want to become a patron, please visit patreon.com slash Nintendo. For just a dollar, you can support our show, get tons of cool things. You can see our current goals to improve the show and our content. We're getting pretty close to some of them, so that's exciting. Um, we try really hard to make it worth it for you because we appreciate your support. And we're always thinking of cool new things to do with everyone. That, yes. more, more to come on that. We got some things in the works that I think will be exciting. Um, And if you're watching or listening on YouTube, please leave a comment about whether or not you want cooking in the game. I've gotten a lot of comments about this, but you know what? Send me some more. (laughs) I'm always happy to read them. And please leave a review of the show wherever you're listening. It helps the show gain some visibility and allows our community to grow. And once again, thank you for listening, and we hope you have a great week. Goodbye, everybody.